Hey, welcome to my video. I'm Jennifer Roberts. You're catching me on my YouTube channel, True Divine 44. You can also catch me on my Facebook page, True Divine, and it is the True Divine for both Instagram and Twitter. Any likes, shares, subscribes, and comments on either or all of those platforms, um, please do so. It's much, much appreciated and much love to everybody who does that thus far. So I'm doing the reading for the 2nd of August 2020. Um, and again, there's, there's, it's related to the other readings. We're going through um, a, a collective um, cycle right now for a lot of us, anyone that this is resonating with anyway. So again, because it's general, take what resonates and leave the rest behind. Um, only take what resonates with your heart and your circumstances right now. So for the first two cards, we've got this <laughs> Nine of Pentacles again and Nine of Cups. Both of them have kept coming up over the last few days, in particular this Nine of Pentacles. Um, so the Nine of Pentacles, um, you know, representing the, the abundance that we have around us, the luxury that we have around us, the thing that we've attained, um, the physical, the, the, the home, the, the work, the, the, the people, um, even the food that we've got available, the food that we eat. Um, but there is a sense of luxury to it. There's a sense of attainment to it. Um, and that is clarified by the Nine of Cups. So again, the number nine being anointed, the anointing, the connection, you know, so something's connected, something's right, because there's happiness in this abundance. There is, um, there is, there is a joy and an alignment somewhere that has helped you create this abundance around you. Um, for whoever it is, whether it's a few people or just one person, be careful of um, sinking into drinking too much again. Um, that's not good. That's not where you need to be right now. Um, although the temptation might be strong right now, please, you know, try to refrain from going down that path again. Um, I say that because the tower card has come up again, and that's been up in the last few days or so. Um, and this is this tower that's built up of ego and illusion, things that may seem nice and good on the out, outside but you know they're built on rocky foundations if you look at this tower it's built on a tiny cliff um, and you know it hasn't even got any room for the foundations let alone to walk around it you know it's, it's a dangerous place to to be living in and so it's coming down and there's this clinging on to this tower to try and stop it from coming down. It came out in reverse the other day. To clarify the tower, we've got this hierophant, the number five. Um, a time of being in the middle, the middle ground, making your decision. Again, being at the peak of a hill. So you're here on the top of the hill. You can either resist the tower moment and try and sink further and further into the illusion into whatever hasn't been quite clicking or being aligned with yourself um, and roll down this side of the hill or you can think what the heck and and go for it and let this tower fall because it's been a strain to keep a hold of it um, and with this the hierophant and the number five the major arcana brings us the knowledge of there is more to this life than clinging on to um, things just because it brings you this physical attainment. There's this, you know, there's this lack somewhere or this physical luxury, this physical attainment has been built up on something that might have been good for a time but just isn't going to last. It's not right or it isn't going to even last in the systems that we're trying to evolve with right now, the, the collective stage, the systems, the laws, the rules that they're bringing out, the limitations, um, you know, the, the, there needs to be a different way of thinking. And it may be that you've been um, not a part of the system, but your business has been wrapped up in a part of the old system, the laws, um, and you're being affected by that and everything in you wants to fight to keep it and maybe mold to their and bend to their desires. Um, but there's a bigger picture here and the Hierophant tells us of that, that, you know, there's, there's, there's much more to connect into your soul right now and going with the flow of nature and the flow of the universe around you 
um, not these man-made systems around you that haven't meant the greatest good for you. Um, to flow with that is actually the safer option because many of these systems and the people that were in charge of them are crumbling down. And this isn't bad news. And when you are connected to your soul, just like yesterday spoke about doing the meditation, connecting to that consciousness so that you can see with clarity, so that you can see through the manipulations, through the contradictions, um, this is a good thing. These towers falling is a good thing. Um, things can be rebuilt on firm foundations that are more fair um, and more just and don't back terrible, terrible things like child abduction and child abuse, um, uh, organ harvesting, you know, from live victims. We've got that going on in China. And so the, the implications of you clinging on to a tower may be that you don't know um, what is behind it and what is behind having this luxury in your life. Um, you know, it might be a difficult pill to swallow, but either way, if you haven't done your research on the companies that you're dealing with or the systems that you are within, it's a difficult time because, you, you know, you, where are your morals, where are your ethics, where do they stand on this? Um, are you too wrapped up in um, abundance and money and luxury um, and are you going to resist this tower? Um, either way, there's there's a flow to nature. There's a flow to the universe right now. There's a rebalancing, a recalibration happening. So I would much prefer to flow with that because I know that that is benevolent towards me, that that is um, a consciousness of its own. The mother that we're on is a consciousness, is a being of her own. And she has done brilliantly with this lockdown period. She has done fantastically at recalibrating and rebalancing um, bigger bees um, buzzing around. I, I plant wildflowers when my daughter does in our garden because the bees love them and we wanted to encourage the bees because they were dying off. And, you know, even that is rebalancing. So, um, you know, to, to maybe let go of the systems and the old paradigms and the protection of such um, allow the tower to fall. Um, knowing that you are connected to every aspect of self, knowing that there is more to this than meets the eye. Um, and the knowledge and the downloads, if you're taking on yesterday's reading, that you will get through connecting with that knowledge that is beyond this physical reality will give you more clarity and more um, purpose as to which way forward is best for you. The third card being the Fool, Major Arcana. Um, there's lots of major arcana in this because it's only like a three card spread with three clarifiers, so six, and then the bottom of the decks. But we've got one, two, three, four major arcanas within this. So this is a powerful day. Powerful changes can be made this day. The full card keeps coming up also. And that's what I'm talking about before, being actually in flow with what is real, i.e. the balance of nature, the flow of nature. Um, the, the direction that nature is giving us right now, that um, with uh, uh, less of a <coughs> penchant for greed, you know, we, um, we have a, a beautiful nature to look at again. We have a beautiful world um, to experience that is full of life, larger life too. The insects are much larger than usual, I feel anyway. Um, and so for you to be like that and to be like any wild animal in the, in the within the, the mother the great earth right now and to just flow with the changes rather than um try to cling on to these man-made systems the promise of that with the empress card the next major arcana the number three so she is the collective of the um the fool card and the magician and so for her to clarify the fool this is the promise of grace, abundance, true abundance, connection. Um, you know, she's the expression of, of the fool and the magician. Being able to trust, being able to have faith in, and being able to flow and being able to not use 
the lessons and things along the way as something bad but being the magician and using them for tools to go forward knowing how to do things how not to do things um, she is the manifestation of both of those cards together she is the ex expression of beauty and grace and art and um, one thing that's coming up in my mind as I think about the Empress is to look at art again uh, why again this is part of the illusion if you look especially but it happened it's happening in the uk too i've always wondered why politicians of of whatever side they're on um in particular this side in america it's the democrats in that they've always um used art um deliberately so they seem to really funnel money under the guise of protecting the art um protecting culture um the, the, the elites from that side in particular, when I've been looking into it, um, it's been something niggling with me and this makes sense to me now today. They, they're very in touch with the, the auctions and owning certain pieces. And then I look to um, a guy who I listened to, David, the other day, who has compiled information that's already been put out there and then information that he's come across. And you realize that in these art pieces, in these old, old vases, in like um, Da Vinci's paintings and all of that, there is hidden messages, hidden messages that they had to hide from the church. That's what they're collecting. That's why they funnel so much money through art, because they are always looking out for pieces that they can take away from the public eye. That information that our ancestors, those who went before us, tried to bestow upon us when they saw through the illusion of the towers that were being built up through organized religion initially, and then politics. And so to see things in a different way, like that hangman from a different perspective, to be able to see through this all-seeing eye, your all-seeing eye, rather than seeing through the filter of, of what, they, what they know, what they collect, and then allowing you to build up towers just how they want you to build them up within their system. And so it's asking you to see things in a different way and to recognize the power that you have within you, each and every individual one of us, when we connect with our consciousness, when we start thinking and acting through that, when we start thinking and acting through this love, this fertility of the Empress, this beauty and grace and poise, rather than and hurting each other upsetting each other, triggering deliberately each other, attacking each other. We're looking at a time now where these systems that are being protected by people who dare to, to shop their neighbors for not wearing a mask to the very authorities that most of the people that are working within them are considering walking away right now because they're seeing through what they're being asked to do, they're seeing through these paid rioters and all. I, I don't blame them once for one second because that's the very thing that we don't need to be doing is tarring everybody with the same brush just because they were part of or worked within a system. It's by their beauty, by their grace, by their actions now that we judge them. Well, we don't judge them, we just know whether to roll with them or not. Um, but so. On the bottom of the deck, we've got the Three of Pentacles, but it's in reverse. Um, and I really do feel like this is, you know, have you been working with the wrong people? Have you been teaming up with the wrong people um, that weren't for the greater good or weren't for your greater good? Um, there's not unity here. Um, there's almost joint culpability here. So be careful if you're within something that has been niggling away at you and you are maybe seeing what has been going on behind the scenes. Um, you want that tower to fall and you don't want to be in it when it falls. So if that resonates with you, particularly in business, take note of that, do some digging and, and find your way forward to chart in your own course, being this fool card again, knowing, knowing through the fool card and then the empress that the promise is there for your abundance, for your productivity, for your fertility. 
if this resonates with a relationship, which it might for a lot of people, um, there's the abundance on this side of the tower with this happiness that it brings, this alignment that it brings, but there's this elephant in the room. Something is being built up on illusion, non-truths. Um, and then there is this truth coming out, this inevitable truth coming out, whether you like it or not, um, with this high refund card and this tower coming down. You allowing that tower to come down, speaking with honesty, speaking with truth as the Hierophant does um, from all layers and all aspects of self opens you up again like yesterday in a different way, even, in, even a more powerful way to this new path, this new beginning that has aligned with you so much so that the Empress ordains it in this abundance and fertility, real abundance. Um, so add in more to your luxury that is around you, to the beauty that is around you, um, to the understanding of the connection of the all that is around you. It really is this divine feminine. And the divine feminine is everything we feel, touch and see on this Mother Earth. You know, the being a being, being a self, being divine feminine herself, um, of course, having a balance of a divine masculine also. But, you know, um, there really is something to be said right now for waking up the goddess within. Now, if you're a woman, that represents you either doing that yourself, well, doing it yourself particularly. And if you have, you be discerning about the partners that you have around you. Because the role for your partner around you or the men around any of the women is for you guys to be the master to be the divine masculine spark that wakes the goddess up within the individual women you have around you, whether they're daughters, whether they're nieces, whether they're lovers, whether they're friends. Um, waking up the goddess right now is more important than ever. The goddess that we stand on outside, the, the, the goddess that we live within, it has been woken up from a sleep and the beauty is astounding the nature that is coming back up is astounding so waking up the goddess is a key aspect to the reality that we'll bring in um, waking up the goddess is both the responsibility of the the woman to be discerning as to whether she has a master at her feet to wake her up that can explore her that can initiate her that can enable her, that can fire her up to know who she is and the powers that she has, both within the home and on the collective stage. And for the men, it's for you to be discerning about your actions towards women, about your thoughts towards the women in your life, and being that master with that spark, with that action, the beauty of the divine masculine, that fire to wake that goddess up, to warm her up. To, to channel her abilities through letting her know what those abilities are that you see, that you respect within her. This is a key aspect, believe you may rem remember these words, in that waking up the goddess is a key aspect to us bringing in a reality like no other, like we couldn't believe, with beauty, abundance, fertility, grace and poise, and people having a, a more natural role again, naturally feeling more balanced because they know who they are, they know what they're capable of and they know what their duty is to allow this flow to continue. So it's a powerful, powerful reading again, like they all have been lately. And this is the Seven of Pentacles on the bottom of the other deck. Um, Reevaluating what your abundance is, where it lies. Um, Re-evaluating where you are, um, how you stand with what you've gained, and and reevaluate in the path forward, and maybe being brave enough to let go of this, so that you can bring in this. This is bun abundance and luxury. This, on the other side of the tower, is a promise of even more, like you wouldn't have dreamed of. 
So that's the reading for the 2nd of August 2020. If you would like a private reading with me, please get in touch on Facebook at True Divine or any of the other details below. You can email me if that's easier for you if you're not on Facebook. Any energy work, same goes. Any spiritual guidance, same goes. Um, other than that, be balanced, be whole. As always, much, much love. Mwah.